Sean McVay had a very interesting comment that could be telling about his future with the Rams and we're throwing out grades for all the Rams offseason signings. That's coming up next here on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Ramley? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Rams, your daily podcast covering your Los Angeles Rams. Free and available, Revy Gear Podcast, Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're also available over on YouTube, so if you haven't yet, do us a huge favor. Head over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, and give us your Rams off-season grade. Let us know down below. My name is Doug McCain. Friends call me DMAC. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. I've been covering LA sports for over a decade. Bleach Report, SI, 24-7 Sports. Now the Rams 4 locked on. And as always, I'm joined by the Rams pre-half and post-game show host for the Rams flagship radio station, ESPN 710 LA. He's entering his ninth season covering your Los Angeles Rams, the people's champ, Mr. Travis Rogers. You can follow him on X at Travis Rogers. And on today's show, we're continuing to break down the Rams offseason, throwing out grades, some impact players for next season, some players to watch during training camp. But first, this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Down the Game Time app, create an account and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. All right, Travis. So we're to the point where we're counting Sundays. Got twelve right. Sundays left before the Rams take on the Lions. So it's getting closer. Also, the Rams have announced when rookies and vets will report to training camp at LMU at the West Side Loyola Marymount. It's July twenty third. So we are closing in on camp. Sean McVay has a renewed sense of energy. Hey, man, football's just getting closer and closer, man. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I hadn't really thought of it like that, but you're right. Like you, you look at the last couple of years that Sean McVay has has coached this team, and obviously he shows up. They're incredible. They're really good. They go to a couple of Super Bowls. Ultimately, they win Super Bowl Fifty Six, and then that last the, the year after that, the five and twelve season was obviously a huge disappointment, but it just seemed like Sean McVay had the weight of the world on his shoulders. We talked about how maybe he's going to leave, maybe he's going to go to TV, take some time away. It seemed like that was the inevitable that that was going to happen. And then last year, this incredible reinvigoration and just this excitement and bounce in, in Sean McVay. And you got to think it's going to be like that again this year, Just just getting a chance to coach a team that's on the ascent all over again. It's got a ton of good players. I, I can't wait to see his level of enthusiasm because he's always full of energy. Yeah, absolutely. And he said recently that this feels like year one. It feels like year yeah. one for him. Well, hey, you know how I take that? That means you're going to coach another seven years then. You're going to be with the Rams for 14 years, right? That's my interpretation of him saying it's year one. If he coached another seven years, he'd still be way short of 50. That That's what's so crazy about this guy that that – he feels like he's been around forever and he's nowhere near even the the midway point of his coaching career. It's 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 really truly remarkable. Yeah, honestly, we could spend an episode on that, just like how he's really on the trajectory for it to be an all-time great coach, to be a first ballot Hall of Fame level coach. And I think that has to enter his psyche at some point, what he's built here with the Rams. But definitely encouraging to see his renewed mindset and just how much he is embracing these young players in this post-AD era of Rams football. And definitely is the number one thing that, along with Matthew Stafford, is the reason why they're going to have success this season. But let's dive back into these grades from the offseason. So first one I want to start with is Colby Parkinson, the former Seahawks tight end. They signed to a three-year, $22 million deal. The Rams needed tight end after Tyler Higby. He went down with an AC on MCL injury during the wild card loss to the Lions. Seven and a half million dollars per year. That's not cheap. There's no guarantee he's going to emerge as an impact tight end, but he definitely did turn heads during OTAs. I definitely think when you look at that size, six seven, he's got the height. He can high point balls. He can box out defenders. He can bring you that red zone threat that Matthew Stafford loves and needs, quite frankly. I definitely think he's one guy to watch 
during training camp. Yeah, it's interesting. He's kind of been under the radar just, I think, because of the role he played in Seattle, that he was really never the the guy in Seattle at that position. But that doesn't mean that he can't be the guy here. Like you mentioned, and, and like the everydayers know, Rams fans know, they're a bit in search of their next tight end right now. Tyler Higby has been here the entire you know era of, of Sean McVay. He's been somewhere between decent to pretty good for most of the time that he's been there, but they've never really had that tight end that's been a, a real true weapon in the sense of a regular part of what they do offensively. We've seen them thrive with wide receivers. We've seen them have a, a handful of different running backs who have hit some very high highs, but the the wide, or excuse me, the tight end has really not been there. We'll see whether it's Parkinson. I think probably you're, you're looking for more of just, you know, typical NFL production as opposed to a real playmaker out of him considering what he's done so far. But I, I think that right. I think you're right. D Mac. I think that's a position uh, for the Rams, this, especially on offense where you have a pretty good idea of what everything's going to look like. Um, you know, Blake Corum obviously is a new guy, but as far as the offensive line, as far as the wide receivers, the quarterback, Kyron Williams, you kind of have an idea what that's going to look like, but the tight end position is a big question mark. Major question mark. I do think there's a really good chance that you see Davis Allen get some opportunities sure. early on. Sean McVay did say that he took a tremendous step forward towards the end of last season during OTAs. And let's not forget when Tyler Higby went down, Davis Allen went into that game and he ends up catching two passes for 28 yards. He moved the chains there for that first down. He didn't look like the moment was too big for him. And look, we see the success they got in round five last year with Puka Nakua. Yeah. He was also picked in the fifth round, 170 fifth pick last season. So he definitely has the catch radius and the potential. So I definitely think they like what they have in Davis Allen, but Kobe Parkinson is someone they've invested in. And you look at the size, like I said, you look at what they need. I definitely think that he's someone that's going to get the runway early on to see if he can take on that role. Cause he went from someone who wasn't used and just wasn't utilized properly in Seattle. Like you said, he's buried in that depth chart. Yeah. So he's kind of unknown from that standpoint. And look, this is someone who had he been the primary guy, you could be looking at a much bigger contract. So I think they could have found a lot of value in this deal if he works out like they hope he does. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I want to go back to Allen, like you mentioned a second ago. I think where you can be excited about him and, you know, maybe you get a one-two punch with him and Parkinson along the way is, Allen was way better at the end of the season. McVeigh was far more comfortable using him at the end of the season. Stafford went to him more often towards the end of the season. He was on the field way more at the end of the season because the tight end position, as far as Sean McVeigh's offenses goes, is probably the second most complicated part outside of the quarterback himself so that he was able to earn the trust of both the head coach and the veteran quarterback and was getting more and more opportunities, getting more balls thrown his way. Like you mentioned, first down plays, even got into the end zone towards the end of the season, I think speaks to him starting to understand what they're asking of him in that role, put him together with more of a veteran player like Parkinson, that big body like Parkinson. Maybe you do have a little, you know, one, two ham and egg sort of approach there that can give you that production that, that that really hasn't been there. It's the one offensive position that hasn't been explosive for the Rams in the McVay era. And we know the Rams were after a, a wide receiver and they didn't pick one up at least as of yet. So they're going to have to, I think, utilize the tight end from a passing game standpoint more than they may, may have anticipated. But we know that in this offense, if you can find a reliable tight end that can make plays, they're going to go to you. I think that Sean McVay is at the point where he's going to tailor his offense to the guys that make plays. You know, Colby Parkinson proves early on that he can get it done, especially in the red zone. He could be that guy for this team. I think him along with Tredavious White, we'll talk about in a second here. They're kind of the wild card signings, yeah. right? Where I think the upside is extremely high for Colby Parkinson, but we have to see him do it for a full season. I mean, if you look at his career, the 618 yards, I mean, if you look at the catch rates, I mean, he hasn't had a ton of production, but the flashes, there have been some signs that he's got it. Yeah, look, he's got to get the ball thrown his way, right? It just never happened in Seattle. Like you mentioned, those are those are relatively you know small numbers for somebody that was in the league for the amount of time that he's been in the league. And it's just, it's not because he can't do it. It's because he wasn't having the opportunities in Seattle and hopefully they come along in LA. Yeah, it's also kind of one of those things where like the Rams are on such a roll lately. I'm like, hey, if you sign this guy, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt, right? You got to sure. trust the less need in this camp for what they've been doing the last couple of seasons. By the way, I give this a 
B just because I, I can't go higher than that. I think it's quality though. I think, I, I think that's about right, but I do think that there's an opportunity for that to be low, um, that he could be a lot better than that. And I think there's probably some, you know, maybe unfortunately an opportunity to where, you know, he was buried for a reason. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But I, I am optimistic. Like you said, if, if the Rams like it, I love it. Yeah. His a upside, but I'm just going to give him a nice little B right now, yeah. but the, coming up next here, more grades, more off season moves. We're going to discuss that's coming up next. You on locked on Rams. All right, so let's talk a little bit about that game time app. I was talking with my pal Andy Kamenetsky, who hosts the Locked on Lakers podcast, and we were talking about game time, and he told a great story about how when he was a kid, he was trying to go see the police and the synchronicity tour, and he's like, oh, I'll just catch him next time, and then bang, the police broke up. He never got to see the synchronicity tour. So this is why you got to go to your game. This is why you got to go to your concert. This is why you got to go see that show that you've been dying to see. And you need a ticket to get in, and that's where Game Time comes in. The Game Time app allows you to find incredible deals, especially last minute deals, whether it's a concert, whether it's a ball game in an area near you. Maybe that player's coming to town that you've always wanted to see, and you keep telling yourself, oh, I'll just catch him next time. Don't wait until next time. Do it right now. And you need your ticket and you can get it through the Game Time app, right? So take the guesswork out of buying all your tickets, your Major League Baseball tickets with Game Time. But you got to put the app on your phone. So here's how you do it download the Game Time app, create that account, use the code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create the account. Redeem the code locked on NFL, L O C K E D O N N F L, locked on NFL for $20 off. Download that game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And we are off and running here on Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday. Free and available, wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Travis, I was in Rancho Cucamonga yesterday for Clayton Kershaw's rehab ah. start, and I ran into a fan of the Locked On Podcast. Let's go. Uh, so shout out to the Ramley out in Rancho. We got the Rams Dodgers fans out there, so big shout out. It was Jose Vasquez, I believe his name was. Big fan of the show, big fan of yours. But shout out to all of our everyday listeners out there. And you can join the Everyday Listeners Club, too. Right now, membership is 100% free at the moment. And you can join in. You won't miss a thing about your Los Angeles Rams. But all right, Travis, here in our second segment, we're going to pick it up on the grades. And we're going to talk about Demarcus Robinson. Demarcus mm -hmm. Robinson is really interesting because if you look at his numbers last season, they don't blow your mind, right? 26 nope. receptions for 371 yards and four touchdowns. But you got to contextualize a little bit and understand that when the year started, he was behind Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson, Puka Nakua, and Tutu Atwell on the depth chart. Then starting in week 13, he took over right there towards that wide receiver three, and he had a really nice stretch. We had a stretch where he had four straight games with a touchdown. He was a downfield threat that Matthew Stafford really started to build some chemistry with. They bring him back on a one-year deal, five million. I love this bring. I love this deal for Demarcus Robinson because if they don't go and improve this position, he's someone that we've seen produce at this level, and I just think it was a nice pickup at the price. I did, like you said, at that price, I think it's a terrific pickup because you mentioned it. This was a guy that was kind of, is he going to make the team or is he not going to make the team out of camp last year? It felt like, you know, he was kind of maybe into that last handful of players on whether they will or will not make it. Ultimately, he does, but he was behind the players that you mentioned. Van Jefferson, believe it or not, even though this feels like a lifetime ago, was on the Rams to start last year. Yeah. And 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 was expected to have an impact. He really never did. They moved on from him. Uh, Tutu Atwell, and not to do the the usual thing that we do here on Lockdown Rams, where we talk about Tutu and how it hasn't really happened. And this is the chance. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. He's just not as good as Robinson. Demarcus Robinson is a better NFL football player than Tutu Atwell was or is. And all of a sudden, you, you had him in the lineup and you had him catching passes and you had him getting in the end zone and you had him be a regular part of the threat. And when you put him together with Nakua, you put him together with Cup, 
That is a three-headed monster that is very legitimately difficult to deal with. I don't think that's true with Atwell on the field necessarily. It certainly wasn't true with Jefferson on the field. And I think the Rams know it. McVay knows it. Matthew Stafford clearly trusts him. He would throw him the ball frequently. So I I, I really like it, especially like you mentioned, DMAC, at that price. This was not something that made you go, I don't know about that. That was like, yeah, that's a pretty good deal for a pretty good player. I really like the acquisition. Yeah, at $5 million, that's definitely fair for what he produced and the role he'll have for this team. And when you look at when they release Brian Allen and the money they save from that, since you're getting him for Brian Allen, if you kind of want to look at it from that perspective and how just it impacts the Rams financially. I mean, for a guy that didn't start until week 15, I love that. Demarcus Robinson at that price, absolutely give this an A signing. And he's still, too. Like, he, it, it's, he doesn't freak out. Like, you never have that moment – and I think this is the thing that the the Rams have done a very good job of collecting guys like this that are pros. And maybe they're not absolutely the fastest guy or the most, but but what they do is they're in the right spot at the right time. They read the thing correctly. They don't freelance when it's not time to freelance. They are pros, pros. And Robinson, you know, we've talked about a former Super Bowl, you know, wide receiver. He's played in in big time games. And when guys like Stafford and McVay trust where you're going to be, then they can use you at your absolute best. And I think that's what we saw towards the end of last year. Yeah. I mean, he's money when it counts. Those 50, 50 balls. He's a red zone target. I did think when they made this signing that they would draft a wide receiver higher in the draft. It was kind of around the time when you had the rumor about Odunze. Yeah and Mike Evans, but I still think that, hey, if he has to be your wide receiver three, you could absolutely do worse, especially sure. at that price. But next, I think we get into some of the more wild card ones, and that, of course, is Tredavious White. So Tredavious White signs a one-year deal worth $8.5 million. You can max value up to $10 million with some incentives. And I think the first thing when you talk about Tredavious White is we know that this guy, when he's fully healthy, he's an all-pro caliber level cornerback but he's coming off an achilles injury last october that's a lot of money to give a guy that's coming off an achilles injury but i think when you look at where the rams were in their secondary you needed to upgrade the talent and they did it in with someone that has a lot of upside so if they hit on this this guy could turn out to be one of the best value deals in the nfl in 2024 I'm going to take the the first and second round picks that they took off the table. I'm going to take Verse and Fisk and just kind of put them over there for a second. I think that Tredavious White is the most important person on this defense coming into this season. Because I, you know, I know we have Kobe Turner and Byron Young and some guys that had nice rookie seasons, maybe even better than nice, but the Rams need to get better at the corner position. The Rams need to have some guys that are playmakers at those positions rather than just guys that are kind of getting by on, on a week to week basis. If you get the best version of White or something close to that, this could be the thing we're talking about come October, November, December. Like, my goodness, what a find this was. If he can't get on the field or if that Achilles injury is something that lingers to the point that makes him less dynamic, less explosive, less of a playmaker like I was talking about, then it's one of those we still kind of have the same issue that you had before where you're not really taking the ball away all that often. I, I think it's incredibly important. I think there's big, big opportunity here. But like you mentioned, this is a highly athletic position. You're dealing with an injury to an Achilles, which was not in ancient history. It's relatively recently. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of question marks there. If this hits, I think that Rams defense goes from, yeah, we'll see, to I think it's going to be pretty good. If it doesn't, then I think you got a lot of questions. No matter how good those guys up front are, if you can't cover, you can't cover. 100%. Here's why I love this signing is that, one, Without the Achilles that you just mentioned, without the ACL that he had a couple years ago, you don't get him at this price, right? No. So the only way you can get a player with this upside is if there's some baggage, right? If there's some dings and you have to kind of roll the dice on that as well. But look, let's just be honest. This is someone who, when he's healthy, is an all-pro level player. He's a Pro Bowl level player. No. And I think, too, it kind of speaks to what direction is this Rams defense going to go with Chris Shula? Because he has the athleticism, he has the skills to play man coverage, something that the Rams 
definitely kind of struggle with if you look at guys they had on their roster, the Darion Kendrick types, right? But he also has the ball skills, the instincts to excel in zone. And I think that's what you'll see a lot of with the Rams and Tredavious White is him making plays in the zone. And also if they want to get more aggressive, which I know that we see in the comments all the time, you want to see more blitzing. Well, if you do get that with Chris Shula, you got Tredavious White. He can take care of receivers in man coverage. So that's what makes this so enticing. It's tough to give this one a high grade. I mean, he's been limited to 21 games in the last three seasons, 21 games in the last three seasons. And since he was a second team, all pro in 2020 picked off three passes in 14 games, he dealt with those injuries, but Hey, it's kind of one of those big ifs. If he stays healthy, I think he's going to produce. If he didn't lose that athleticism and that quick twitch that we saw early in his career, I think he's going to produce. But right now, I think I'm going to stick with a B just because of the concerns, and he has to kind of prove that he's still that guy. Yeah, I, I took a couple of these in college. He, he gets an incomplete, right? I, I, I think it's impossible to uh, evaluate what he's going to be until you see whether or not he's healthy and whether or not you see – uh, if he still has those abilities to make plays, right? Whether he still can take it away, the Rams are the way that I believe the Rams really need to get better at along the way. I, I, I just don't know. It's so hard. The best version of him is an A. If he can't play, it's a D. So I just until we see him out there, until we see him try to become Tredavious White all over again, if he's what he's at his best, Forget about it. It's awesome. But like you mentioned, it, it's a long injury history. And you're talking about a position where elite athleticism is is kind of the opening bid. And if that's not there, what does it look like? I just think it's way too early to tell. Yeah. I mean, I think you're looking for a B signing, right? I think he looking for an A signing as well. I mean, talk about the Dodgers. Is he going to be a Teoscar Hernandez? Right. right. Something like that. Or a Noah Syndergaard. I mean, to me, the scale is Shohei Otani and Noah Syndergaard, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the, the bad signing scale, but... Syndergaard, hopefully not. Let's just... Uh, <laughs> maybe a Tyler Anderson, right? Maybe a couple years ago, we'll take... Yeah, we'll take no, that's definitely, like that. for sure. That would, be, that would be a nice one. One-year guy, go out there, have a lot of success. But coming yep. up, another Rams cornerback that could have a big impact on the season, the return of Darius Williams. We're going to talk about that. That's coming up next here on Locked on Rams. And welcome back to Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, Darius Williams, he's back in the horns. He signed a three year, $30 million deal with the Rams. And you look at his contract, and you got the $22.5 million guaranteed. I think when you look at the Rams secondary, you improve the secondary, you improve the line. Of course, you can't really improve the line without Aaron Donald, but at least you addressed it. Jared Verse is in the mix, but cornerback was a top priority for this Rams team, and we saw the success in the ball skills he had. I mean, I'll never forget the pick six he had in the playoffs against the Seahawks, but, I mean, according to PFF, I mean, he was one of the top five cornerbacks last season. He allowed a completion rate of 59.3% in coverage and a pass rate of 69.6%. His coverage grade of 85.3% was the fourth best of any quarterback in the NFL. So they could have really got themselves a top five to 10 cornerback. And he's familiar with the Rams schemes. I think that's important as well. Yeah, I do. I think this is kind of the opposite of what we were talking about with Tredavious White, that the Tredavious White signing is more of a, yeah, this may be great. It may not. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. It all depends on how healthy he is. Darius Williams is almost the, you kind of know exactly what it is that you're going to get, that you, you what you're buying is pretty consistent performance at that position. Is it high level elite kind of stuff? No. But is it good enough? Is it is it going to be something that you can count on that you know exactly how he's going to perform week in and week out? Yeah, and and I think that's kind of the let's make a big bet over here with White and as far as just upside goes, and then let's make a, a more conservative. You know, this is more of a bond sort of buy as opposed to a, a volatile stock in, in Tredavious White. You're, you're, you know exactly what you're going to get. They need it. They need to get better at this position. The, he makes them better at this position. But I think if if Rams fans are hoping for some very splashy return on this, I think it's probably not going to come. But I also don't think you're going to be banging your head on, on Sunday afternoon saying, what is he doing? Why is he out of position? I think he's just a really solid acquisition for the Rams. 
I do too. And I think that he's a guy that, look, he plays that ball like a wide receiver at times, right? I mean, he has those instincts. Last year, he had three picks from Akella Witherspoon, Daron Kendrick. He picked off a pass, but he had four interceptions himself, yes, last year. So I think Darius Williams is someone that can definitely improve the turnover ratio for the Rams. I think he has that familiarity with the defense that they're going to run. So I love this signing. I definitely do. I think I give this one an A. I think he's going to be a top 10 cornerback in the NFL. I think he's going to just hit the ground running because there's not going to be a huge learning curve for him because he just is plugged right into a system that he knows. So definitely give this one an A for me. It's you've brought this up a couple of times and I think you're right. I the the fit in the Chris Shula, the, I, I, I think this is a huge variable that maybe we haven't taken into consideration nearly enough. We've talked about Aaron Donald's absence and, and his decision to retire and the acquisitions that we've kind of gone through position by position. And obviously they were very defensive oriented in the draft and all of these things are going to have a great deal of impact on what we see on that side of the ball. Uh, once the season starts, they got a brand new coordinator. We got a brand new first time Coordinator. I know he's been in the Rams building for a while, and I'm optimistic that he'll do a good job, but Raheem Morris is a head coach. Raheem Morris had been around the league a long time. Raheem Morris had the, the, the buy-in of every single person in his defensive room, of every single person in the organization. Raheem Morris had this incredible uh, uh, leadership quality that everyone bought into, and, and replacing him is no easy task. And we're kind of going through position by position, and, and understandably so, but the guy that's responsible for putting all of these things together is new too. And 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 I think that how he is able to kind of blend all these players and, and maximize their strengths and try to minimize whatever weaknesses there be, I, I think that Chris Shula's role in this is incredibly important and something that we really haven't spent a ton of time about because if this was all with Raheem Morris, you kind of know what it's going to look like. But with a new defensive coordinator, a new first-time defensive coordinator, I think that's a question too. 100%. I think that's one of the big storylines heading into sure the training camp in the season alone is just does Chris Shula does he have the juice does he have that well, leader no. of men quality yes. that Raheem Morris had and he was a 10 out of 10 I mean how good is he with the X's and O's how can he handle everything in game I think he's been groomed long enough has enough experience to get it done from a schematic standpoint but you wonder just how he's going to be as a leader you bring up a great point Doug a great point the the adjustment how many times at the beginning of, of a Rams game the first quarter maybe even in the first half you're like my God, they can't stop anybody. Go back to that Lions game in the playoffs. The Lions just get to a brrr, touchdown, brrr, yep. touchdown. You're like, oh, okay, this is going to be ugly. They don't do, they don't, they don't do anything in the second half. Just completely locked in, shut down. And that's because Raheem Morris been around the block a million times. Like, guys, we're going to figure this out, and they do. How does he adjust in game? How does he decide to say, hey, this plan's going to work, stick with it? Or, hey, listen, the thing we had drawn up isn't working. We need to change to plan B, and here's plan B, and here's how we're going to do it. That's what Morris, I thought, was terrific at. And until you're in that chair, until you have to do it, I think it's an entirely a theoretical exercise. We're going to find out. But Morris was great at at getting better as the game got deeper. We'll see what Chris Shula does. Yeah, I mean, just this episode alone, it's amazing just how many unknowns and there are heading to the season, how many questions need to be answered. But, yeah. you know, you have to feel for a guy in Chris Shula, right? A guy that takes Tough over place. a defense the year after Aaron Donald retires. That's like, he's like the Tim Floyd, right? <laughs> Tim Floyd taking over the Bulls a year after Michael Jordan retires, right? I mean, it just got to feel for the guy. It, it, like it, I, I like that. You're taking over after the year after Michael Jordan retires and Aaron Donald is the Michael Jordan in this situation. But, Imagine if you had just been a, a, a guy that had been in it and you're kind of sorting to see it. And the guy that leaves is incredibly popular. The guy that leaves is something that everybody buys into. And it's like, okay, you're up next, dude. And you just got to step right into that. That's a, that, that is a really big ask. It, it may be great. We, you know, it's, but it's one of these things until we see it, we're not really going to know. There's that hundred percent. I think too. Close friends came up with Sean McVay. That definitely helps, and he's going to get sure. that long runway. And I think Sean McVay, too, is going to have his hands more on the defensive side, too, just Which as far as being a part of everything that goes on. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Rams. We'll continue our grades. We'll continue to break down the Rams offseason tomorrow. But my name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And you can follow the People's Champ, Mr. Travis Rogers, at Travis Rogers. And until next time. 
Whose house? Slots on Rams' house.